Mamilitamina Tasmai Shri Gandhinamaha, Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Shiva Shiva Tivirai Prasthaya Bhutale, Namaste Sarasati Deva Gauravani Pacharine, Nero Sisa Sunyavadi Prasthaya Deva Sakarine, Panchakopa Purupesha Pipa Sindhu Deva Chapatitana Padre Yoga Vaishnava Yoga. Shri Krishna, Jai Kamya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Masavi Gora, Prabhu Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. So we're following in the footsteps of Hansarupa Guru and also welcome all the devotees here. Thank you for coming. Great opportunity to go deeper into our spiritual life by associating with devotees in the process of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So I was reminded that uh, just yesterday is a very uh, important day and the anniversary of Krishna consciousness in the Western world. It was 55 years ago that Srila Prabhupada uh, began his kirtan in Tompkins Square Park. 55 years ago, so that I you know that is New York City. So Srila Prabhupada, he chose New York to be the place where he would make his attempt to bring Krishna consciousness to the Western world. It's interesting how Prabhupada reflected on why he chose New York. He uh, he speaks about it in two ways, in two different aspects of itself. He said, uh, my god brothers, uh, they were on the instructions of my spiritual master, his divine grace, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Also went to western countries, and they uh, went to London, and went to Germany, went to what is now known as Meander, which was then called Burma. They also went to France. And they all came back with really no real success, although there was a little bit of contact with some of the upper, upper echelon people in, in London, but still nothing was really formally established. So Prabhupada saw that how his godbrothers had what we might have said failed to establish Krishna consciousness in the Western world. So he was thinking, I should go to a new place to fail. Why should I fail in the same place as my god brothers? So he chose New York. <laughs> and then he also talks about how he was dreaming he was coming to New York. He also had a dream that this would be the place that he should begin his movement. So Thompson Square Park is the beginning of this worldwide movement which now has thousands of temples, preaching centers, restaurants, farm communities, educational situations, all because of one man's desire to change the world in a very, what we say, revolutionary way to bring into the Western world, something that was really not understood at all. It was experimented with, it was speculated upon, but the deep Vedic culture of Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada's appearance in the world was not accidental. It was actually prophesized in one Purana. It's called, I think it's be called the Brahmanda Purana. There's a statement, and the statement is spoken by Lord Sri Krishna himself. And Krishna is speaking to Mother Ganga, the personification of the Ganges River. And Krishna is saying something quite prophetic. And he says that in 5,000 years, this was 5,000 years ago, uh, there will be a mantra upasaka, a person who will take my name to every town and village of the world. That was spoken by Krishna himself five thousand years plus actually to Mother Ganga and that is written in the Shastras to show that Srila Prabhupada's appearance in the world is not something accidental. 
was actually prophesied. And the time, why did he come at the time he came? It's interesting also. And Prabhupada was asked about that when he was questioned by his disciples. Why did you come at that particular time? He said, because before that you were not ready. You were not ready to hear the message of Sanatana Dharma. And at that time, we all know, when Prabhupada started the movement amongst people who were quite down and out, rejecting all the values that their family members had given them, the ways of life of the material society. It was a total rejection of social and family values. And looking, searching, speculating on different types of lifestyles, which would be unique and somewhat revolutionary. And out of that came the hippie movement. And uh, of course, in, in that movement, there were people who were quite frustrated with all the attempts or even their lives to somehow find happiness. So they were looking, searching, going this way and that way into different philosophical teachings, mostly in Eastern to find something that they could, that was interesting, that was new, and that would give them some satisfaction. And uh, Srila Prabhupada was that person that picked them up. Prabhupada's prophetic, or that prophetic statement by Krishna himself is not just one, there's three actually. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaks to Sri Narada Muni, also saying that a, a Sanapati Bhakta. Sanapati means general. A Bhakta who is the best of all Bhaktas will appear some, soon in the world and will take the glories of the holy name everywhere. So we have that statement by Krishna, we have the statement by Lord Chaitanya, and then of course, even more recent, in the late 19, 1800s, by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, where he had a vision when he was looking into the direction in, in Mayapur to where Lord Chaitanya's birthplace was. And in that vision, he saw something really phenomenal, something that was really amazing. He saw people from every race, the brown race, the black race, the white race, the red race, the yellow race, all joined together dancing, singing Jai Satchinanda, Jai Satchinanda, Jai Satchinanda. So he could understand that soon the great soul would come and take this message to every corner of the world and people from all cultures, all backgrounds, all, all walks of life would uh, find attraction to this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and in the process of pure devotional service. So that was the historical setting that really laid the foundation to Srila Prabhupada's appearance. But there's one interesting little story, and I heard this when I was in Mayapur many years ago. I was sitting amongst about a hundred of my goddaughters, all Prabhupada disciples, and we were in the room of His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj. All glories to Bhakti Charu Maharaj one of the greatest of all proponents of Lord Chaitanya's mission in the Eastern society. And uh, the devotees were speaking about their experiences with Srila Prabhupada. It was just like, just Prabhupada disciples there. And then one devotee who had, was massaging Srila Prabhupada, it wasn't Srila Kirti, it actually was Baba Nanda. And he said, I was with Srila Prabhupada and I was massaging him. And Prabhupada usually speaks, but this time he was very quiet. Prabhupada would always like to speak about Krishna consciousness, how to spread Krishna consciousness. His mood was always thinking, you know, we, we're doing this, how can we improve it? You know, we should try this and see what we can, how much more books, more programs, more travel, more. Prabhupada always thought in terms of more. It was never enough. It had to be more, it had to be more. And that was Prabhupada. But this time Prabhupada was, you know, what we say, unusually quiet for quite a long time. 
And then, uh, then he, it seems like the voice came out of nowhere that Prabhupada started to speak. It was like this uh, very powerful experience that, as Baba Nanda described it, Prabhupada started talking about himself. And he said, I was with Krishna in the spiritual world. And Krishna told me, you go to the material world and preach. And I said to Krishna, material world? Horrible place. Horrible place. Horrible place, yeah. And so, I mean, if you're living in the spiritual world, you can understand that. And so, and Krishna responded to me, he said, no, you go, you write some books, and I'll protect you. So I went. Krishna asked me to go. So Prabhupada actually was, is a Nitya Siddha, a person who never really touched the material world, although he appeared in the material world. He was completely free from anything material, and he came on a mission. He knew who he was, and he knew what his mission was. And it's amazing what he did in 11 short years, from 1966 to 1977. And New York was the springboard that brought everything about. So New York's special. It's, it's the, we say, the birthplace of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. It has a great history of devotional activities, and Srila Prabhupada put a lot of time, energy, and emphasis on developing Krishna consciousness in New York. He said, we should have 50 temples here. That's what he said, 50 temples. He said, and that won't be enough. <laughs> that won't be enough. Because he could understand, and he liked New York, because he could see New Yorkers were very inquisitive to learn and to understand. And so that really brought Prabhupada's enthusiasm up when he was preaching and gave him an opportunity to bring more people in and to spread Krishna consciousness. This is a little bit about Srila Prabhupada's prophetic appearance in, our, in this world at a time when the world was quite topsy-turvy and people were just looking, searching, struggling uh, for answers to life's questions. And Prabhupada had the answer. He said, it's Krishna. You're all looking for Krishna. And so in this appearance of Srila Prabhupada in this world, we have been, what we say, not Less, but we, our good fortune has descended. They say every living entity, no matter what their situation is like, has some good fortune. Something good will happen to that person at one time in their existence. How it manifests may be different from person to person. But we can understand that Krishna consciousness covers that completely. Why? Because whatever you're looking for in life, you can find it in devotional service. It's, the, it's all that's complete, it's perfect. It covers everything, all angles of vision, all subject matters in existence and everything. And it centers around simply how did Prabhupada spread the moment? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. And that remains, and it actually becomes even more important now, as we go on in our life in this pretty much confused time in the world's existence, where the Holy Name even becomes more of a lifesaver, a lifeboat, not only for those who are practicing, but for the world in general. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he wanted to make a point, he gathered all his devotees together and had Haryana. When they were in Navadvip, 
and Lord Chaitanya began the Sankirtan movement with his devotees, there was complaints by the Brahmanas, not by the, the Islamic society who was somewhat ruling the country, but by the Brahmanas who for some reason or other were envious of the devotees and didn't agree with their way of worship. So they found fault with the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and with the movement itself. So they complained to the Muslim authority, this is not our movement. You know, they're simply making, they're singing and dancing in the streets. And what are they doing? They're going to wake up Lord Narayan and he's going to get mad and throw his chakra and we're all going to die. That was their so-called explanation. <laughs> and so they went to the Kazi to complain. And the Kazi, you know, he's the, he's the head of the state, so he has to listen to the complaints. So he came and he's instructed the devotees, no more. And then he left. But they began again. And this time when they began again, the complaints became more so. And again, this time the Kazi came in a more angry mood, broke the drums and threatened the devotees that they don't stop and they will have to go to jail. But so they were a little bit apprehensive to get, begin again. But when Mahaprabhu found out about it, he became like fire. My movement <laughs> didn't stop. No way. So he gathered all his devotees and he had Harinam Sankirtan. And, he, and when Lord Chaitanya called his devotees to have Harinam Sankirtan, people came from all over the universe. It wasn't just the devotees in that area. There were millions and millions of people coming from everywhere just to join in that Harinam Sankirtan. And they had torches. And they, in the evening, they started to march on the house of Shankasa. And they were dancing and chanting, and Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda were in the front, leading the kirtan and dancing ecstatically with all his associates. And millions of other people were following. In fact, the whole town became swept up in the sound of the holy name of the Lord. And people forgot what they were doing and simply left their house to join the kirtan. The thieves were thinking, ha, oh, everybody's leaving their house. Now we can steal. But when they went to steal, they forgot they were thieves. And they joined the kirtan themselves. And everybody was chanting and dancing. And Lord Chaitanya was also a little angry not little, he was angry. <laughs> that the Kasi had stopped the movement. So there was two mantras going on. One was Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare. And the other one was kill the Kasi. <laughs> People were chanting, kill the Kasi. Of course, we don't chant that mantra. <laughs> It's not part of our, you know, program. But that was Lord Chaitanya. And so they were dancing and chanting, and they all, and then because it was evening time, it was supposedly dark, but everyone had torches, and they were holding these torches high, and it looked like the sun had come out. In fact, the whole area was bright light. It looked like the mid, it looked like midday, although it was the evening time. And they were all chanting and dancing, and, so Lord Chaitanya demonstrates what is the power of this movement. Where does that lie? It's in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mantra. And Prabhupada has shown us by his example. He said, simply take this chanting seriously. Make it the most important part of your life and everything will become auspicious. Because Krishna's name is Krishna Kali Kale. Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar. Krishna descends in the form of his holy name. He's not different than the holy name. Prabhupada, 1972, he was giving a lecture. He was talking about how Prahlad Maharaj was harassed so much by his father, Ranyakashi Pu, but he was absorbed in thinking of the Supreme Personality of God in his heart and his much as his father, who was a big demon, he's one of the biggest demons in the history of, of our philosophical knowledge of the scriptures, he wasn't afraid at all. 
He was completely absorbed in Krishna and his father couldn't do anything. Tried to kill him in so many ways. Couldn't do it. Nothing. And then a Devaki, when she was locked in the prison cell and Kamsa was threatening their life along with her husband and he was killing each one of their children, she was in a very fearful condition. But she took shelter of Krishna and she was free from that fear. And Prabhupada explains, he said, as Kali Yuga goes on, the demons will increase more and more and more and they will do anything to stop this movement. But he said, just chant. Just chant Hare Krishna. And do it in your homes, do it on the streets, do it in, in, in the temples, do it everywhere. And by doing that, if we can build this, this chanting all around the world, the whole world will become Akunta. That's the power of Krishna's own name. When, when chanted with faith, with, with enthusiasm, Krishna's name is Krishna. There's a story, and of course there are many stories, just to illustrate the power of Krishna's holy name. There were two devotees that were helping Srila Prabhupada preach in India back in the early 1970s. Uh, and they were sent to the area known as Bangladesh at the time and uh, to preach. And at that time there was a war going on. 1971, 1972. So these devotees were there. The one was Brahmananda Guru, who was one of the first devotees in 26 Second Avenue in New York to come to Srila Prabhupada. He was Brahmananda Maharaj, and also where there was Pushta Krishna Maharaj. They were together, they were preaching. And uh, the war was continuing, so it was becoming kind of quite dangerous. And Srila Prabhupada was a little bit worried, not a little, he was really concerned. So he starts sending letters trying to bring these devotees back to, into the area where he was in India. In, in, uh, in Kanda, he was in Rave at the time. And the devotees were also hearing from the local people that like, it's better you go, you know, your life is at risk. So they decided, let's go. So there were buses leaving the country. And they were taking refugees out of the country that wanted to leave. But the only problem was the Islamic army was stopping the buses. As they were leaving the country and they were seeing if there were any so-called enemies on the bus. And uh, they stopped this one bus and then they recognized these two devotees and took them off the bus, put them in front of a firing squad and was about to kill them. And so Brahmananda is there with, guard, with the Push to Krishna Maharaj, and he's, he gets really enthusiastic. He takes he has his bead bag and he holds it up in the air and he starts chanting really loud the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, and then Push to Krishna gets to and they're both chanting as loud as they can. And all of a sudden, one the lead soldier comes up and says, All right, get out of here, get on the bus and go. And they, they left. Because that was Krishna's holy name that saved them, saved their life. That's just one of many examples how what Krishna's holy name is. Of course, we don't use it for personal protection, but it, it does give that. We chant the holy names to spread the glories of the Lord and to purify the atmosphere. So devotees can, or to people in general, can experience the happiness of Krishna's holy name. Now that's the power of Krishna's holy name. So this is where Krishna consciousness, it sounds so simple, it sounds so, what we say, what we say, easy, and it is. Chant, chant Hare Krishna. And Prabhupada would make jokes. Chant Hare Krishna. And he talks about this cartoon, there's one old lady and one old man in the cartoon, when the old lady is saying to her husband, Chant, 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 and the man saying, can't, can't, can't. And then Prabhupada said, just see, he can say can't, but he won't say Krishna. So, yeah, 
Uh, it's, so we're chanting. I'm sure most of you are chanting, but we don't chant enough. That's my observation. And it's Satatam Kirtayantam. As much as you can chant, and then you will understand what this Krishna consciousness means. And you'll understand the power of this holy name. But chant more. Even if you chant with a fence, Brahma said, just keep chanting and after some time you become free from the offenses of chanting also. The Prabhupada came to give us the chanting of the holy name of the Lord and this process of awakening our natural attraction for the Supreme Personality of God in the devotional service. It all began here in New York. It's interesting. This, this city, and Prabhupada said, New York, 50 years ahead in Kamaluga. The rest of the world needs to catch up to the elements of Kali Yuga, which has already set, set place in New York City. But wherever, is there, wherever it is the greatest need, what is that saying? There is the greatest mercy. Wherever there is the greatest need, there is the greatest mercy. So therefore, if we take this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha, Maha Mantra seriously and chant, not, I mean, if we're chanting 16 rounds, why just 16? Papa said, 16 is just to get you started. <laughs> he said, why? He said, in one moment, he says, why 16? Why not 16,000? So, and that's the, the point is that the holy name is so merciful. It's so easily available. And it's so powerful at the same time that you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission is to give it to everyone and anyone, regardless of qualifications, regardless of position in society, anything. He, he wants to give it to anyone. Even Lord Chaitanya even took two dogs back to Godhead by chanting Hare Krishna. Even dogs can chant Hare Krishna, some. Of course, they were special dogs. They had Lord Chaitanya's association. But he showed that, and of course, we have that picture right there on the wall. Lord Chaitanya chanting and dancing. And what's happening? It's just the, the animals, the lions and the deers. They're dancing and hugging each other. Deers and lions don't get along so easily. But that's the holy name chanted by him. She can bring in Mahaprabhu. Now this is the mercy in this age. And it's and from a material point of view, sound is the most powerful object within the creation. And spiritual sound is the most powerful of all the spiritual aspects. So when we hear the sound and when we chant the sound, something's happening. Can't, sometimes you can't see it or experience it immediately, but it happens. When there's a transformation in consciousness, there's a purification of the heart, there's an attraction that's awakening for the Supreme Personality of God. So this holy name is, is the greatest gift that can possibly be given. It cannot be underestimated. The glories of the holy name can never be overestimated. It can only be underestimated. So, and we have the experience that, and Prabhupada, when he was opening the Krishna Balaram temple in, uh, in Vrindavan, and uh, there were so many other temples, mosques, and holy places there. And here we were coming with this American, European combination of people who were mostly all white-skinned persons, Coming into Vrindavan, establishing a temple there, Prabhupada had to look good amongst all of them. He, gives, he had to establish that what we're giving it is something genuine. And so Prabhupada said, I could have opened the temple in the ceremony by simply doing kirtan. And that would have been sufficient. He writes about that in the sixth canto of Shambhava. That would have been sufficient 
to open the Krishna Balaram temple. Just kirtan. That's all. But they wouldn't have accepted. They wouldn't have given us the, the acceptance of being authorized. So I went through all the rituals and had the homers and the yagyas and the, all these things in order to show to the Mohammeds and to the priests of the other temples that we also adhere to the Vedic principles like that. But Prabhupada said the holy name was enough. <laughs> the holy name is enough. That's how Bali, Krishna's holy name is. So the reason I'm speaking about that because I'm thinking in our present situation, if we really want to understand deeper how to overcome this difficulty that appears to be going on in the world now, and so much confusion, so much misinformation, just take shelter Krishna's holy name. Everything becomes clear, everything becomes nice. And you're insulated, you're, you're, what we say, protected from all the dangers of the material world. And there are so many out there. Padam, padam, yandhi, padam. That's the nature of this material world. So chant, or chant always. Now, can, now that sounds too, too extreme. Like, how can I chant always? I have to sleep too. I have to eat too. Yes, we do that. But understand that chanting means association with Krishna. When Prabhupada was asked, I think it was in New York when he was coming in from one flight, the reporters were there, they asked Srila Prabhupada, what do you get from chanting? You know, they were thinking, you know, you know, something, some benediction, something material, something. Prabhupada said, we get chanting through chanting. And that's not just a nice little cute little saying in order to, you know, sound nice. The more you chant, the more you chant. <laughs> and it gets better. <laughs> it gets better and better and better. The Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu demonstrated that so many times that they would have kirtan. In, uh, and there was one, this was Lord Nityananda's kirtan. This was mentioned in the Chaitanya Bhagavad. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda were in Jagannath Puri, Lord Chaitanya instructed Lord Nityananda, take all of your gopals, your associates, go back to Navadvip and spread the Hare Krishna Mahamantra there. Spread them over there. I'm here in Puri, you go there and preach. So he did. And when he arrived with all his devotees, they began kirtan at the house of Raghavapanda. They were chanting all the way to get there. And they began this kirtan, and the kirtan went on for three months. Three months. This is in the Shastra. And no, everyone forgot about their bodily needs. Three months of kirtan, and the devotees were dancing. They were, they were walking up the side of the tree, going out to the end of the branches and dancing on the branches. They defied all material laws. And some of the devotees became so mad in the kirtan, they picked up the little trees and they were pulling them out of the ground and dancing with the trees. And the villagers, they were seeing what happened. They joined the kirtan. Some of them came into the kirtan and forgot what they were supposed to do and they stayed in the kirtan for one month. The Lord Nikki Nanda's kirtan. <laughs> you can imagine what that was like. We can't imagine, but anyway. So these are some examples of how powerful Krishna's name is and demonstrated. And you might say, well, that's, you know, that was, you know, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda. But the holy name is no less. <laughs> it's always fully powerful. Our enthusiasm for chanting and our prioritizing the chanting in our life will make a big difference in how we experience the chanting of the Holy Name. So thank you very much. I think I have to stop here. So we have a few moments. If there's any comments or questions, I'd be happy to, yes. Yeah. So, so what you were saying, was it about um, the 
He said the holy name. He called it Mantra Apasika. One who will live to take my holy name to different places around the world. Yeah, so Krishna was indicating that a person will appear and spread my name everywhere. It's not so much necessary to explain unless there is some hesitation on their part. But if they're eager to chant, even if they're chanting for some material gain, let them go on. And then they'll, they say, you, once you get the higher taste, then you'll understand that it's not about material gain. It's about, it's about awakening that love within the heart. For, for, for preaching, when we meet very new people, we don't try to give too many explanations. We just try to induce them in some way to change. And then later on, when people become more attuned to the whole understanding of the practice, then they explain a little more clearly. Thank you. Yeah. My question is, I have a question. Okay. It's uh, about that. Does Krishna project himself like this, like a PowerPoint, to the world, or is just a scholar who is trying to take Krishna consciousness to the next level? Does he project himself like a PowerPoint, using him as a body, human body, to do all this wonderful work? Is who, he, who is she on the PowerPoint? I mean, Krishna, does he project himself as project himself like a PowerPoint? Go to his body, use, it, use him as an instrument. I'm not very good at catching all the words you're saying. Somebody can explain what he's saying. He's saying, does Krishna project like a PowerPoint presentation, like Prabhupada's yeah. his energy? Is that energy so powerful? No, no, not really. So is it one be like me and you? Just chat. <laughs> Scholar. Well, Prabhupada was a scholar of the Vedas. He knew the Vedas well, and he could also explain it to others. So in that sense, he was a, a great scholar of the Vedas. Is he the Pope of Krishna or the Pope of the Hindus? Well, how do you describe him? He, he, he's, a, he's a spiritual person. He has nothing to do with Hinduism or Buddhism or Madhism. He came as a spiritual being to teach Krishna consciousness. But he happened to appear in India. Is he married with children? Hmm? Is he married? Have children? No, he's a sannyasi. Sannyasi means one who dedicates their whole life to worshiping God completely with no other activity. Okay, I'll find it that somebody will come up. But you can be you can be, you can be Krishna consciousness conscious in married life too. If you want to be married and have children, you can also be Krishna conscious. It's not limited. Prabhupada was a particular what do you call it, Udansu. He was a monk. But it's open for everyone. Okay, since he dropped the body in 1977, did he come back again? If you, if you can recognize him, he's here. Yeah. He's here. He's here, but you have to recognize him. And he's right there. He's sitting on the Vyasa sign. So if you think that's a, a statue who is just a statue, it's actually Prabhupada's personally there. He's watching everything that we're doing. He's listening to everything we're hearing. He's a transcendental person. He's not limited to material things. So. His, his, his form, in the form of a mercy or a statue, is his personal presence also. Then who replaced him when he died? The next person? All of us. We're all his representatives. He didn't appoint anybody. He said, you're all my representatives.
Everybody who takes up Krishna consciousness. You know? And we're all representing Prabhupada by preaching what Prabhupada taught us. Yeah. That's simple. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. Shilapan Pan Ki.